Hey, everybody. Let me just get this starting out of my face. So, welcome to our 10K AMA live stream. This is awesome. I am so happy that uh, 10,000 people have decided to subscribe to the channel. And uh, so thankful to all of you who are here. And we are going to have some fun. Now, I hope you can hear me. Um, <laughs> I've got a couple things to show you. And uh, of course, if you have questions about anything, Transformers wise, cats wise, anything, please put them in the chat. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for showing up. And hopefully uh, we'll have a good time. I don't know how long this stream is going to go. It's going to go as long as it goes. But I do have a special thing that we're going to be doing in two weeks. We're going to have another live stream. And you guys, if you want, can actually be a part of it in the actual live stream on the panel. So we're going to have one other Transformers guy. Patriot Prime Reviews. Um, Jason, awesome guy. He actually got me on his before the whole, uh, before I even launched the channel. So I was actually on his um, live stream. So he's going to be here. Um, the way it's going to work, and basically you might see it says Super Chat for a chance at a special prize. We're going to have four slots for you guys so if you do a super chat no matter how small you get a chance to be in the live stream and we're going to be talking transformers if only four of you do it those are the four if more than four people do super chats then i will draw randomly and you guys can actually be in the live stream so that's the way it works um so, again, bring on some questions, but while we're waiting for questions, I got some neat stuff to share. So, I was just at a place called AwesomeCon. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a pretty cool convention. Um, they had Hayden Christensen there, Rosario Dawson, Charlie Cox, um, Tom Welling, Michael Rosamom. It was a very cool con. And I did a little shopping. So I bought a couple things, not a ton, but I wanted to share my haul with you. So while you're thinking of questions, check out what I got. So this stuff I actually got from uh, a toy place. Do I have the uh, name on? Of course not. I will put it in the comments later. Um... I was not vending there. I was just buying and recording panels. So my other channel is Phantom Spotlight. So we put up all the panels on there. But I bought some stuff. And one thing I bought was this. So this is a Japanese um, version of some toys from Transformers Animated. And... It is the clear versions of Optimus Prime and Rodimus. So a very cool set. I'd never seen it before. And I love recolors, transparent stuff, Japanese exclusives. So this is one of the things, and I can actually do a review on it. If you guys want me to, you can let me know. But this was one of the items that I got. And I will find where I put the note of the store name. It's in Richmond. Um, would have been nice if he had emailed me. I could just bring out my phone and find it. But uh, that was one of the items. The other ones, I don't know how many of you are interested in these. These are the uh, Makudo very cutesy female Autobots. I have actually the RC one. This is the Chromia one that changes into a motorcycle. I may do a review on both of those if you want to see. But this is another thing that I got from the same gentleman. 
Um, did I get a deal? Of course I got a deal because I very rarely walk away without getting a deal. But this is a very cool representation of Chromia. And it will go uh, in a review if you guys want. And probably even if you don't. So that is two. I actually got six items total. The other things I got, I got some really good deals. So if you guys watched the Transformers We Never Thought We'd Get video, you may recall I had a version of Impactor in there from the fall of Cybertron line. And I don't have the other four so that they can merge into Ruination. Um, but I now have a couple of them. One of them is Twin Twist. And this guy goes for about $60 or more on eBay. So I was a little like, eh, I don't know if I really want to get a repaint that much. 20 bucks he had on this. 20 bucks. So I had to get Twin Twist. But wait, there's more. Because I also got Top Spin for 20 bucks. So Top Spin and Twin Twist, 20 bucks a piece. Now all I need is Roadbuster and Whirl, and then I can form the Autobot Ruination made from the Wreckers. So very cool. More stuff to get. And I also got from the Beast Hunters from Transformers Prime. Predacons Rising. I got this set, which has Cindersaur and Smokescreen. So, Cindersaur and Smokescreen in, like, legend size, core class size. They're small, but he had 10 bucks on it. And I ended up getting, like, a little bit off. Your KO Technobots. Oh, cool. Lieber just got the KO Technobots from that I reviewed. Were they the G1 KOs or were they the uh, the weird ones? If it's G1, that is awesome. I mean, all Transformers are awesome. But uh, yeah, the G1s are very cool. And I got Night Shadow Bumblebee. He had 20 on this. So basically, I ended up, uh, yeah. Twin Twist for 15 bucks from the Fall of Cybertron line. Absolutely, that's a great deal. I ended up getting $5 off my total purchase. Um, cool. G1 Computron is one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, so this, it's a little beat up packaging, but for 20 bucks, I figured I would get the Night Shadow Bumblebee from uh, Beast Hunters. So, Transformers Prime. So, that is very, uh, very cool. IDW, Bumblebee, and Scoop. Those are cool. Um, are those the, uh, from the Thrilling 30 or the Generations line? Thank you, Ridiculous Badger. Um, I'm still pretty amazed that we got to 10,000. I'm going to try for 20000 um, by TFCon. And by the way, I am going to TFCon um, if you are... Oh, the Titans Return. That's a really good deal, too, because Titans Return Twin Twist is wow. I ended up getting the Japanese one, which is a Headmaster and a Target Master. But I will be going to TFCon, and if you are going, please find me. Say hi. We'll hang out. We'll look at Transformers. And maybe I will talk to you like this. Starscream! Where the hell are we? TFCon, what the fuck is that? So, Ethan is asking me about my store. Now, years ago, I had a store called Total Science Fiction. And I had Transformers. I had Star Wars. But I had a lot of Transformers. And the location was not the best. I did better online. Unfortunately, the timing was kind of bad. Um, because I had decided to open up my store because I had been doing online sales. And I signed 
the uh, agreement to move into the store at the beginning of September uh, 2001. And very shortly thereafter, um, there was the attacks on the Twin Towers and all that. And if I had opened up a gas mask and survivalist store, I would have been rich. But I was opening up a toy store and all my sales went. <laughs> but I managed to hang out there for a year. Um, so I had the store for a couple years. It, it was a fun thing. Um, I would get stock in. And of course, the if it was a Transformer I didn't have, that went into my collection. Sometimes I would trade up some of my stuff. But I had a lot of different Transformers. And this was the time of Beast Machines, so we had a bunch of those. But it was it was fun, but it was a lot of work. And again, the location was not the best. Had very few customers come in. If it wasn't for online sales, I would have totally shut down. Plus, I had to do consulting on the side. So, But uh, yeah, those years, I actually just recently had a customer from the old days get in touch with me and say hey is this you from total science section it's like yeah so fond memories there and uh she still enjoys transformers so that's kind of cool it goes to cons all right so you can ask me more questions um or i can answer some uh frequently asked questions Questions that I've gotten in comments were, what got you into doing YouTube? Um, ah, but I'm going to put that on hold because I got a question. Um, Michael remembers his first Transformers was the G1 Skywarp, which is a very cool toy. I actually did not have that until years after I didn't get that in the store. My very first toy in the Transformers line is was Beachcomber, the Minibot. And Beachcomber, I really liked Beachcomber. And then from there, it just... I missed a lot of the first series. I was a fan of the show, but I didn't realize about the toys until a little bit later. Got Beachcomber, got a bunch of the others... Went back and got some of the toys from Series 1, but I didn't have a Megatron for a long time. Starscream ended up being the leader. I am the leader of the Decepticons! Um, a hand-me-down hot spot without wheels and nail polish on it. Wow. That sounds very hot. Um, yeah, once I got caught in the bug i had so many transformers and uh later on i ended up getting married and uh most of my collection was sold for a song but once we divorced i ended up getting even more than i had before and at one point i had every single g1 um, Transformer that was put out, including some variants like the Blue Eared Cyclonus. And I probably didn't have every single variant because I know there's a Warpath variant that I didn't have. But I had a lot and I had all the G2s, I had all the Beast Wars, all the Beast Wars 2 and Neo, except for like the really hard to find ones. And I pretty much was a completist. And I had a bunch of European ones. I got some. Uh, European Action Masters. I used to have a Trax, but unfortunately Trax, I sold. And I'm regretting it to this day. GoBots. Yeah, Soundwave. I got a secondhand Soundwave. And uh, some cassettes. He wasn't in the best shape. Um, now, I got one. When I had my store, someone bought in a bunch of stuff. And one of it, one of the items was a near mint sound wave with the box. Now the gentleman that worked for me really wanted the box, so I sold him the box. Came a good deal, but I kept the toy, and that's the one that I actually displayed in a few videos. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, GoBots, I still have some. I have a blue leader one. So, and I also had a gray one. And uh, someone may be joining us right now. Hi, Sky. Say hi to everybody. Um, but yeah, I still have a bunch of uh, GoBots hanging around. I think I have a Coptor with the helicopter blades, which is pretty hard to find. But yes, Sky is here. Um, someone asked, how many cats? I currently have five cats. So there's Sky, and some of you have seen uh, Leo in a recent video. And there's also Herbie, Newt, and Dex. <laughs> Sky! So again, if you're wondering about the uh, super chat for a chance at a special prize, um... We have four slots open in two weeks for a live stream, and you can be on it. And what we're actually going to be discussing about Transformers, what do Transformers do in peacetime? Like, how do they occupy their day? I mean, I have to go to work to make money. I have to feed myself. But Transformers don't seem to have as many needs. You know, and they don't get married and have kids and all that stuff, so... That's what we're going to be talking about on the live stream, and the most ridiculous theories will probably be the best. Um, so anyway, five cats. I used to have six. Um, I had one. Unfortunately, we had to uh, put him to sleep. He was rather old. I'd had him since a kitten. And uh, he is actually buried in my backyard. So... Um, all right, what third party um, starter transformer would I recommend? If you're just getting into third party, I say go for stuff like Iron Factory, the smaller ones, the legend size ones, because one, they're not difficult to transform, and two, they're pretty inexpensive to start with, so you can decide if you like the third party. So. Or some of the Hot Toys stuff, like um, I have uh, toys over there. Can I reach some of them? Um, I think I have a like third-party Sound Blaster over there. I would say start with the less expensive ones and the smaller ones. Eventually, as you gain more confidence in the third-party market, you can go ahead and uh, get something like, I actually bought that Thunderclash um, one, Lightning Eagle. And uh, I really like Thunderclash, so it was kind of like, but he was expensive, so I would say stick with the lower priced ones. Um, but again, about the special prize, if you do a super chat, you're entered into being on the live stream talking about Transformers with me and Patriot Prime. And no matter how small, it could be 50 cents, I don't care. Um, whatever the minimum is, you could do that. If more than four people give super chats, then it will be a random drawing. But if only four people do, then those are the four people. We have four slots for the live stream in two weeks. We're, we're talking about that. And yes, I agree. We need a new uh, Thunder Clash. All right. Um, as you went all toys. <laughs> yeah, I was every single Transformer. In fact, it got to the point where I had so many Transformers and I was like, I want more, but there's not any more to get. And I didn't really know about third party at the time. So I ended up getting um, like knockoff stuff. And I actually got the Power Ranger, um, the spaceship that changes into like a Megazord dude um, as a made him an Autobot. I didn't put a sticker on him. 
But yeah, I bought some other transforming toys just to flesh out my thousands of transformers. Um, still have that hot spot, but the first transformer bought for me was Power Master Optimus Prime and Hunger. And then that's all you had until GoBot Afterburner, which Afterburner is pretty cool, and G2 Prime. Which G2 Prime? Laser, original, with the voice box, or GoBot? There was also a GoBot. And yes, I uh, I backed the Omega Prime. I'm going to be getting that. Greetings from London. Hello, London. I've been to you, London. Well, I've not been to you specifically, but I was in London. Years ago, I went to uh, Walker Soccer London. Um... And then uh, from Walker Stalker, when I went, I also wanted to go to the Doctor Who experience, which is in uh, Cardiff Key. And Jonathan, awesome. Um, I don't know who Lucas is. Who are you talking about, Lucas? Um, real quick to finish the story. So I was... I flew in for Walker Stalker, and I wasn't leaving until Wednesday, so I figured Monday or Tuesday I'd go to the Doctor Who experience. And then I looked online after I got there and found out that it was close on Monday and Tuesday. So I ended up skipping the last day of Walker Stalker on Sunday and going to Cardiff Key to the Doctor Who experience, which was a lot of fun. Um, there's actually a video on my other channel about that. But before I went, I dressed up as Jackson Lake from Doctor Who, and went over and said goodbye to David Morrissey, who played Jackson Lake from Doctor Who and the Governor. Um, the original of the voice box sounds nothing like uh, Peter Cullen. So Lucas Logan. Oh, Logan! <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be here. I would hope he'd be here. Logan is just a fan who's always like, "Hi, Captain Kyle," and we started a banter back and forth. And I basically uh, make fun of him. Um, and he makes fun of me all the time. It just kind of happened. All right. Ethan, thank you. So, so far we got two. So two slots potentially filled. Um, any recommendations on... So Legacy United Erector. <laughs> Um, yeah, Erector. I remember, did I do an Erector? I have so many Transformers, and I don't even remember what I have. Um, but, thank you, Ethan. That's your first Super on the live stream ever. All right. Um, Michael Brister says, I always thought uh, Rodimus Prime never got the love he deserved. He had giant shoes to fill. Always a soft spot for Rodimus. Um... Anyway, Log Logan's a fan. We banter back and forth in the comments, and I hope he shows up at some point. Michael, I agree with you. A lot of people give Rodimus a hard time, and they're comparing him to Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime became Optimus Prime 9 million years ago. Now, he was asleep for 4 million, but still, he had 5 million years of experience that hot rod didn't have before he became leader of the autobots he had a year and yes did he you know doubt himself of course he did did he make mistakes of course he did but you know he still tried to do the right thing and yes he had big shoes to to fill and yeah people shit on rodimus all the time um and i couldn't agree more that uh he wasn't given a fair shot. You know, Optimus had years of experience. And yes, Rodimus Prime, as Ethan just said, he did bring peace to Cybertron. Let this mark the end of the Cybertronian Wars as we march forward into a new era of peace and happiness. Till all are one! <laughs> yeah. Hasbro, the Herodimus, original Rodimus Prime toy was kind of meh. Hot Rod was better. 
Okay. I don't know where you guys are located. But if you can, next month is Steel City Con. And one of their guests is none other than Judd Nelson. Judd Nelson, the voice of Hot Rod and Rodimus. In Transformers the movie, in Transformers animated, in Transformers um, Power of the Primes and Combiner Wars, he did, he came back to that role. So I am planning on bringing one of those Transformers the movie uh, reissue Hot Rods and... I normally don't go for a lot of autographs, but I want him to sign that. Um, I have, I think, two, well, three Transformers items that are signed. I have a Silverbolt signed by Scott McNeil. I have a Dinobot reaction figure signed by Scott McNeil. And I have a Jetstorm signed by Brian Drummond, the voice of Jetstorm from Beast Machines. Um, Yeah, so... I would definitely say uh, if you can make it to Steel City Con next month to meet Judd Nelson, Rodimus Prime himself, I say go for it. I don't know if I'm going to show him some of the videos that I've made with uh, with Hot Rod fixing Cup. He might find it amusing, but uh, yeah, Lee Bird 76. Prime was a war hero. He was a leader in a time of war. Rodimus ended that war for about a year. And then (laughs) it is the year 2006. And the Decepticons are pretty pissed. They are on the planet of Char. Is this what has happened to the mighty Decepticon Empire? Give, Decepticons, give. We must find Galvatron. Jurassic Steve. Awesome. Um... Now, it, the live stream, Steve, is going to be the same time as this stream. So it's going to be 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, so that might be a little later for you in the U.K. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But, you know, hopefully it will be a fun live stream. Um so there was a movie bot that changed into a vending machine. <laughs> Ethan, I'll get to your question in a minute. Um, but first, we got to talk about the vending machine. So what happened was every time Clutch sees Sam Witwicky, who could have been Spike, he could have been Spike. Um, every time Sam dropped the AllSpark, it would send out energy. And it would anim- it would turn machines into transformers. So, yeah, it was crazy. Um, that yes, a vending machine. I think a toaster. I think a bunch of things changed into transformers. I don't think they ever made a vending machine one, but they definitely made like binoculars and other stuff, which I have some of those. But yeah, there was, you weren't seeing things. It did actually happen. Um, Pondering Gray, thank you very much. And I agree there should be a Death of Optimus Prime support group. Not going to tell you about that. But Ethan wanted to know what BotCon was like. Let me just explain real quick. The old BotCons were pretty big conventions. Lots of vendors. I actually vended um, at one in Chicago. (coughs) <coughs> when I had my store and they were cool and I went to every single botcon from 2000 to 2011 so that's actually 12 of them in all and they were a lot of fun the the exclusive toys were cool I still have some of them some of them like I sold my shattered glass set which I'm kind of not happy about um, but botcon is cool they are reviving botcon and I hear they are trying to work with Hasbro to get, like, officially Hasbro-made exclusive toys. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I believe their first one was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And their the one this year is going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They had one last year here in New Jersey, which was easy for me to get to. The problem, it was kind of a small space. Um, I recorded... 
couple panels there and put them up on uh, Toy Spotlight for you guys to uh, to view. But it was much smaller than the original BotCons. But still, fun. I got to see some old friends. It was pretty cool. Um, so if you get a chance and, you know, you, you can afford it, BotCon is definitely a thing. I'm not sure if I'm going this year. Um, leaning towards no. Um, but I am going to TFCon because it's in Baltimore and that's not that far from me and I'll be driving there um yeah 131 <laughs> yeah Steve I have uh people from the Netherlands on another live stream who have shown up and it's been like it's four in the morning here and we're finishing up yeah so uh if you are on the panel Steve then we will definitely keep in mind that you're uh you're kind of in a later time zone. Um, oh, they did do a vending machine toy in Age of Extinction. All right. The Michael Bay movies. Here's how I rank them. The first one was decent. It was okay. Um, the second one, uh, not that good. Um, the whole skids and mud flap thing was really bad and hanging out underneath Devastator's scrotum yeah that was just the third one Dark of the Moon I thought was better than the second one and it had Leonard D. Moy the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few and then Age what was Vex? Age of Extinction with Mark Wahlberg I'm an inventor well what I invent things. That's what I do. Um, yeah, it was kind of bad. And I couldn't even get through the last night. It just had so many. Within like five minutes, there was like seven plot lines that you had to follow. So the Bay movies. I saw the first one at BotCon. Um, they had a thing where you would pay $25 for a ticket to see... Um, the movie early it was like a week or two early and it was for charity like anything beyond I guess the cost of the theater would go to charity that was the first movie the second movie BotCon was charging $40 to see 16 minutes of footage and Michael Bay was there and you got to and he addressed the crowd and you got to tell him what a great guy he was for more than we got to see the first movie for, you know, $15 more, and we got less. And it was just a bit of a ridiculous thing. I, after 2011, I'm like, they're just getting way too greedy. Fun Publications, I think, was the ones who were running BotCon at that time, and they were just crazy. So I stopped. Um... Stellar wants to know how many kitties I have. I have five. Um, but yeah, they did do a vending machine in Ace. Yes, I have five. This is Skye. She is a tortoise shell cat. And she is very affectionate. Um, Leo, if Skye leaves, Leo might come by. He tends, they don't always get along. So they're very rarely on the same space. So they sometimes run my bed with me together. Uh, the other ones are Herbie, Newt, who we used to have the mother who we initially named Ripley, if you get that reference. And uh, Ripley ended up going to a friend of ours, and unfortunately Ripley has departed this world. And the last one is Dex, who is actually named after uh, Dex from the Daredevil series. <laughs> but is not accurate. I actually told the actor at AwesomeCon, I saw him and I said, hey, we have a cat, we named him after your character. But he's not accurate, he's clumsy, and he's like, yeah, it sounds like me in real life. Seems like a nice guy. Um, so yes, let us all talk about Optimus Prime's death. So I didn't see the movie in the theaters. I didn't even know the movie had come out. So I was just watching my Transformers and then suddenly the next season came up and they had this new guy, Rodimus Prime, who 
was not Optimus Prime. I'm like, what happened to Optimus? And they're like, oh, I can't fill Optimus Prime shoes. You know, and of course I was like, what, what happened? And then I gathered from context that he died in the movie. And then I found the movie. I've had many VHS versions and I now have uh, DVD versions. I don't think I have the Blu-ray, but the original movie, I watched it. And then I got the clamshell, which had the, oh shit, what do we do now? Line in it. Um, yeah, and I was, but I'd already known Optimus died, so it was not so much of a shock. So, yeah. It was uh, a good movie. And I watch it again and again, and I can pretty much quote it. Every time I look into a monitor prime, my circuit sizzle. When are we going to start busting? Wait, wait. I can't. I can't believe I forgot that line. When are we going to start busting the septa chops? Yeah, I think that's it. Ironhide, I need you to make a special run to Autobot City on Earth. But prime! Listen, Ironhide. We don't have enough energon to power a full-scale assault. Ready the shuttle for launch. Obviously, I do better Ironhide than Optimus Prime. Now all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. More than you could imagine, Optimus Prime. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I already knew he died, but I also was a little older. In 1986, I was uh, a teenager. That's all I'll say. Um, yeah, that pretty much almost gives away my age anyway. But, uh, yeah, so I was upset that he died. But then, of course, heroes never die. Watch the return of Optimus Prime February 23rd and 24th on the Transformers or something like that. So he came back. Um... Michael says, my mom dropped me and my brothers at the theaters for the movie. My brother was heavily scarred being eight. Michael was 12, so I had to deal with him trying to give with him by trying to give him candy to stop crying. Yeah, a lot of kids were traumatized. And that's, of course, why Peter Cullen uh, came back. Yeah. Um, Jurassic Steve, so if you could design a transformer from the ground up. What faction, what alt mode, and what name? I actually used to come up with a whole bunch of different Transformers um, and gave them names. Um, there was one. I designed a whole new sub-faction of Decepticons called Communicons, which basically Soundwave is a part of. Um, and Vibrato was like a dual cassette player. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Some of the older ones are. There used to be cassette players that would have two tapes and you could actually play one and record on the other. So you could make mixtapes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Vibrato. He also had a cassette called Crackdown, which looked like Rumbler Frenzy, only his arms changed into axes and he would chop things. So that's one of the ones that I would uh, design. Um yeah, and I've come up with different Transformer names for other things, but let's see. Um, totally cried when Optimus Prime. I don't blame you. A lot of people did. Um, actually, I was at a BotCon and Tyrese Gibb from uh, one of the uh, live action Transformer movies was there, and he was totally freaking out over Peter Cullen, who was also there because he was the voice of like the closest thing he had to a father. Optimus Prime. <coughs> ah. Anyway. Um, Jurassic Steve says, you know what bugged me about the third film was nearly every bot had their heads blown off to kill them. And you wonder... They're robots. They don't need to have the brains... Or the, uh, their laser core or their spark in their head. It can be in their chest. So if they get their heads blown off, they could have their heads rebuilt. But maybe too much energy came out. Yeah. 
the Michael Bay movies just over time just got ridiculous. Uh, I didn't like a lot of the designs. I have I have some of the uh, Bayverse Optimus Primes, but I have a shitload of Optimus Primes. So, um, okay. So lots of Jonathans meeting each other. Um, Marvel or DC? That's tough. I used to be all Marvel. And then a friend of mine was a inker for Superman, the Man of Steel. Um, and he got me, made me sit down and get into DC Comics. And I like them both. They're definitely different. I think the reason Marvel comes off better is most of us here, I doubt any of us is a billionaire like Bruce Wayne. But... We might be a nerdy kid who got beat up in school, and if we get bitten by a radioactive sp spider and get superpowers, we can relate to Peter Parker. Uh, we could be a very brave but scrawny person who got injected with a super soldier serum and became Captain America, but we're not from Krypton. I'm pretty sure no one here is from Krypton. So a lot of the DC main heroes are people that you can't, necessarily 100% relate to. I mean, Superman's a cool character, don't get me wrong. But you can't put yourself in his position because you're not an alien. Well, some of you might be, but I'm not going to speak for you. Right, Sky? Um, so you're not aliens, so how do you, like, kind of relate to that? But you can relate to a lot of the Marvel characters who were normal people and, you know, got hit in the face with some radioactive isotope, went blind, but all the other senses, you know, Daredevil, a lot more relatable characters. Now, you do have Tony Stark, who's a billionaire, and Iron Man, but... <coughs> but still, I enjoy... <coughs> I apologize, I am getting over cold. But I do like DC. I like the animated stuff a lot more than a lot of their live action movies. They tried to take shortcuts. And Marvel lately, I've not been as excited about Marvel. I didn't see the Marvels in the theater. I waited. Um, but then again, I didn't see Aquaman, the second one in the theaters. I waited. So I like them both. They both have their good points. And I really hope Marvel you know, gets back on track. I'm looking so forward to Daredevil Born Again. Daredevil's one of my favorites. Um, can I do Beast Wars Megatron? Well, yes. Well, I think I can. No. Wasp Bonito, what are you doing? Mm, Wasp Bonito trying to avoid going into CR Chamber. Mm. We're all gonna die. I am Dinobot, and I will take leadership of the Maximals. I do okay with Beast Wars. Um, yeah, Jurassic had one of those dual cassette things. Yeah, that was vibrato. He had two separate things. Unlike Sound Blaster, who has, you know, two cassette. You can put two cassettes, but that's... You couldn't play two cassettes at once in him. Um, yeah, the Communicons would be cool. Um, I also designed a uh, another Dinobot called Slash, um, who was like the Finback, but I think they made him uh, Scar. Or no, he's something different. But the Finback one, I think they came out with one, I forget his name, in the Beast Wars, or the Beast Machines Dinobots line. Which was bought over from Beast Wars Neo, but uh, yeah, I slash. But then again, you know, I could have had Guns N' Roses coming after me. Um, yeah, Code of Hero. Um, Phoenix Felix says I cried when Dinobot died. He was my first Transformer toy too. That you see, I kind of when I was initially collecting, I had. Um, G1, and then I saw some of the G2 stuff, and I think I... The only one I remember seeing was a Swindle. 
a G2 swindle. I'm like, I have this toy and in better colors. So I didn't realize G2 would have a bunch of other stuff. When I got back into collecting, I started collecting because I watched Beast Wars and I'm like, holy shit, this is good. Then my first one was Buzzclaw. I'm not proud of that. He's not a bad bot, but I got Buzzclaw and yeah, and eventually I got Dinobot. But Code of Hero, what a fucking story. And the rest is silence. Tell my story, tell it true. The good and the bad. Yeah, Dinobot, uh, that was an amazing story. Bringing him back as a transmetal too, eh, but he was a different character. It was kind of, I, I think they had to do it because, you know, Hasbro put out the toy, but I think they could have left, left, uh, Dinobot just pass away in peace. Um... Let's see. <laughs> David CT. I didn't see the movie for a long time. I didn't believe Prime was was uh, Cartoon Daddy was dead. The Cartoon Daddy. No. Yeah, I I was confronted with it when I watched season three. It was amazing. Um, Jurassic Steve says. I have the new Revenge of the Fallen toy. It's okay with the mask, but without it, it looks like a chicken that got tasered. Um, the Revenge of the Fallen. Which toy is that? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Ethan wants to know if I can sing. Let's see. What shall I sing? You say... The price of my love is a price you're not willing to pay. You cry in your tea that you throw in the sea as you see me pass by. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all you're getting for now. <laughs> um, Jonathan has it wants to know if I do the voices for the Megatron bad jokes. Yes, I do both voices. I am... Star scream. Yes, mighty leader. Yes, so I do the voices for those. Um, yeah, and I actually have to do a bunch more this week. I do a batch at a time. So, a little behind the scenes with the uh, Megatron's Bad Comedy. I use Adobe Character Animator. And I have puppets of Megatron. And... Um, star scream. So I have to write out a script of the jokes. <coughs> and then I have to do all Megatron's lines at once. And then I load up the star scream puppet and I do all of his lines at once. And then I have to edit them together, add pictures and all that stuff. But yes, I am both of those voices, um, in that particular one. I've actually tried out for voice acting uh, competitions at BotCon and TFCon, and uh, I've never gotten chosen. I don't know why. I did. Uh, they wanted a rampage, and I was like, I I think I did. I feel your pain. I must deepen it. I think I had actually went and looked at a video of Rampage so I could come even closer to his voice, and I did not get chosen. And one of the people who uh, did not choose me was David Sabalov, the voice of Depth Charge. And I will be seeing him, not this weekend, but the following weekend, and I will be like, you didn't choose... No, I'm not going to confront him like that, but he's to blame. Um, all right, I gotta look around. Okay. I retroactively collected G1 when I first entered the workforce, but I grew up with Beast Wars. The character fall in love with Dinobot. Cemented my love of Transformers to this day. Dinobot, yeah, he's kind of like the Klingon. Uh, the honorable Klingon of the Decepticons, because he's like, what about Anna? 
Ah, oh, Dinobot, you and your armor. That's what the original Megatron used against Optimus. Um, the king. Who's the king? <laughs> um, okay. Let me go here and uh, the Target Laser Prime. I think it's cool. I ordered it. I had to go to Target to order it. I'm a little upset. I am a Hasbro Pulse Premium member. That that Not that that makes me better than you. Um, but I am a Hasbro Pulse Premium member. And therefore, I should have been informed of these drops before. They did the live stream, but they made the toys available on Hasbro Pulse before the live stream even ended. So I ended up getting three of the new four. And I went to Target and pre-ordered the uh, Laser Optimus Prime with the Target on his trailer. Um, great for Target practice or the Decepticons. But the uh the bird um i i forget her name she was sold out by the time i got there so that's very irritating i will have to try to track it down another way or hope it actually shows up at walmart which those toys don't always but yeah but i think the target laser prime is pretty cool i just have so many optimus primes there's like there's several hundred of them in all different types, right? And I have a God Bomber here. <laughs> um, preview of coming attractions. By the way, if you were wondering about the Japanese uh, Transformers we didn't get until later, or we finally got series, whatever I called it. Um, I'm working on the second video, finishing the editing, and then that will be out. Um, but yes, yeah, so that is uh, the story of, uh, yeah, whatever I was talking about. All right, um, the Target Laser Prime by Sky is, uh, I think it's pretty cool. Who couldn't use another Laser Prime? Doesn't look like it has a gun. Um, Jason Vincent, do you think Hasbro should make an Armada sideways with as many cons versus a G1 punch, counter punch, two pack? And would I buy it? I would buy that. I don't know that they are really, um, that much of nemeses. Um, I think they should just release them separately. An Armada sideways would be interesting um, with the two Minicons. And they seem to have skipped some of the Minicons for some of the Armada figures. But yeah, pretty much they put out... For those who came late, I just bought this. And it's figures I already have, though they're translucent from Japan. And I bought an Optimus Prime and Rodimus animated two-pack. Yes. I pretty much buy just about everything that comes out. I did skip a lot of the uh, simpler Revenge of or uh, Rise of the Beast toys because I didn't really want to get them. But I, I got a few, and I got the Studio S Series stuff. Yeah, Fitch. Is it Fitch? It was sold out in 10 minutes. Yeah, I went on Walmart after I couldn't get it on Hasbro Pulse, and I looked for it, and it didn't even come up. And when I finally got it to come up, it was sold out. So I was not happy. Um, the fallen toy. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so I realize in London it's quite late. Um, the fallen toy. Yes, the fallen toy. Um, what did you ask about the fallen toy? It's nearly. Yeah, I, I actually had the fallen toy. Um, I think I got rid of it. The Fallen ne never really thrilled me. I was not thrilled with The Fallen. Um, <laughs> Jonathan's obviously seen Hamilton. Um, t -t 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 -t. 
<laughs> Sorry, David. Sorry, the cat left. Um, yeah, I forgot exactly what your question was about the... Uh... Oh, yeah, the Fallen's okay with the mask, but with that it looks like a chicken. Yeah. A lot of the Bayverse designs I was not 100% happy with. I like some of the stuff that wasn't in the movies. Um, like some of the uh, S7, Sector Section 7 stuff. Like they took some of the Energon toys um, and made them into movie toys, repaints. I love repaints. I'm a sucker for repaints. Um, yeah, the... Uh, Revenge of the Fallen was not one of my favorite Transformers movies. One and three were pretty much the only ones that I think were worthwhile. The other ones, like I, I couldn't even get through the last night. Um, yeah. Fincher, Fitcher, whatever that Transformer is, I will have to take my chances and go to the store or find it at a con or something. And hopefully I don't want to pay a lot. I don't want to pay a lot for my Transformers. Um, yeah, I went to Walmart and yeah, by the time I actually got it to show up, it was sold out. Um, yes, pretty much my favorite Transformer ever is the Autobot Trax and I am wearing my Trax shirt. Um, and I've met Michael McConaughey, um, the voice of Trax, he's also the voice of Cosmos. And if you saw the evolution of Cosmos, I put a little clip in there from an episode of Captain Kyle's Cosplay Spotlight that I did um, where we had a Cosmos cosplayer that I was interviewing pretending it's actually Cosmos and Michael McConaughey was in the back with the microphone going, well yes, in the Midwest we go around and we uh, we make these crop circles it's a lot of fun you know, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a uh but Trax is definitely, I really like Trax. And I think I do a decent impression. Um, Ethan loves Cup. Cup, I believe, will be the next evolution um, video that I'm going to do. Um, unfortunately, right now, I'm a little slowed down in doing videos. Uh, I'm going to do a bunch this weekend, I hope. But I'm a little slowed down because it's getting back into con season. And when it's con season, my other channel, Phantom Spotlight, takes a bit of my time because I'm recording panels and editing those and putting those out. And uh, But Cup will be the next evolution. Um, this is not a Hot Rod shirt. This is Trax. Trax did not kill Optimus. Hot Rod got in the way definitely made a mistake he should have stayed out of it or he should have instead of being like no you don't megatron and jumping on him he should have shot him from behind and that and then you know i mean prime wanted to shoot him i'm sure but it still would have probably stopped him from grabbing that gun um <laughs> Rizzlid had it in your cart and it was going. Yeah, I hate when that happens. Julian the Grime Eater, or the gr Grim Eater, the Grim Eater, or the Grime Eater. Um, all hail Toy Spotlight. All hail Toy Spotlight and the freaking geek himself. Okay. Um, yeah, four and five are pretty bad of the Bay vs. movies. Um, Warmaster muted and broken. Hello. By the way, if you're wondering about the thing that across the bottom, there's a super chat for a chance at a special prize. Um, for those who were not here when I explained it earlier, in two weeks we're doing a live stream. We have four slots. So, whoever gives a super chat, no matter how much it is, it could be whatever the minimum is. I don't know what the minimum is. Um, is entered in. And basically, I'll put all your names in a hat and draw out randomly four of you. And four of you will be on a live stream in two weeks. 
Pondering Gray is uh, <laughs> hedging their bets. Um, but we'll have the live stream in two weeks, and it's going to be myself and my friend Jason, who you might know as Patriot Prime. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's got a good channel. Does a lot of sticker stuff. Um, but he'll be on the live stream. He was actually, he had me on his live stream, like, even before I think I launched the first video on Toy Spotlight. So, good friend. Um, and he's now going to be at um, TFCon Baltimore. So, hopefully we'll be on, like, some YouTuber panel together. Um, but, yeah. So, that's what the deal is. Anyone who puts in a super chat, you have a chance to be get one of those four slots. Now, I think maybe six people or so have actually done it so far. So your odds are pretty good right now. The more people who enter, the worse your odds. But I don't think we're going to get thousands of uh, entries. Or else I'm retiring to uh, Bermuda. But, uh, yeah, if you... Uh, I don't think it'd be enough to retire to Bermuda. But still, you have a very good chance. And I will actually find a pen and I'll do the drawing before this live stream is over, which we've been doing this for an hour. How has it been an hour? This is crazy. Um, Chris, I, I agree. The Bay vs. Aesthetics. I thought they did a much better job uh, in the that opening scene of Bumblebee and even in Rise of the Beasts um, with what the Transformers look like. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, this is Trex. This is his hood ornament. Um, Warmaster muted and broken playing to buy Hot House Generation Selects. I have that somewhere. Um, I have stuff I have not taken out of boxes, um, because I was going to do reviews on them and then it's been a while, so... It'll probably come out of a box, but hopefully go into another video. Like, what do I have around here? This one eventually I'll do something with. This is the actual reissue of Prowl. I have that around here. There's eventually going to be a evolution of Hound. And this is the Combiner Wars one. I didn't get around to uh, reviewing this. I don't know if I should, because a lot of people have. And I do want to do a Junkion special at one point. Now. Put all the Junkions and bring them all out and review them. That's going to be a long video. Um, Ethan could not find Target Prime, kept reloading Hasbro Pulse. Um, I didn't see it on Hadro Pulse. I went to the Target.com site and I got it there. Um, Pondering Gray says the episode Dark Awakening was a mind fuck. I agree. That was kind of weird. Um, but it was interesting to see kind of a, an evil Optimus Prime. But then they, you know, had to, uh, it was kind of like, a fake out but then they actually bought Optimus Prime back and he didn't do too much in season four the whole three episodes um and then in Headmasters if you watch the Japanese one he didn't last very long in that one either so yeah and they they complain about Rodimus but uh Optimus Prime comes back to life he's like was he like Buffy and he's like I really want to go back to heaven be nice um Jurassic Z says, I never figured out why some Autobots had Earth accents. I was asking uh, Rob Paulson, who's the voice of Slingshot, why Slingshot has kind of a Brooklyn accent. And uh, the only thing, nowadays you could basically say it depends on what part of the internet they hooked into to learn the language. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting having these different accents. Well, like, definitely Trek sounds like he's uh, the younger sibling of Thurston Howell III and he's definitely kind of uh, upper crust maybe Boston I'm not sure yeah 
Soundwave's voice didn't have much of an accent. Megatron, let's go party. Yeah, he, he, he had a great voice. Though they used different processing on it. Because Frank Welker, who did so many voices, was, uh, was the voice of Soundwave. But they once in a while you could hear where they messed up on the processing. And you heard like this little gravelly voice, but it was still in a monotone. Um, but Soundwave's voice was great. Um, speaking of tracks, we need a loud pedal. Not sure what you mean by that, so please explain. Um, Kingdom Tracks is okay. He's actually, I think he's actually better like than the uh, Turbo Tracks. Um, but yeah, he could have been better. I got some add-on weapons for him, and they don't really fit that well, so I'm not quite sure. The gun works fine. But, yeah, they need a better tracks. Um, <laughs> turns around and pulls out a house of transfer. I could pull out a bunch of stuff. Stuff that I, you know, actually showed in videos. <coughs> Oops, again, that's a spoiler. Um, I'm trying to find a piece of the axe of my original Voyager animated Optimus Prime so I can do a good versus review. I have the deluxe but part of the axe of the Voyager size one is missing. It's in a bin somewhere. I gotta find it. And then I can do a versus review which no one will watch because it's been out for a while. Um, Snarl is a great figure. We just seem to get him in abundance in the UK much like Cosmos. Yeah. Jurassic Seed you could probably make well there's redoing cosmos so maybe not now people won't be you could have probably made a mint selling uh cosmoses from the uk for all i know you did excuse me i'm gonna blow my nose again getting over a cold i'm sorry if i could have avoided doing that on live stream i would have but yeah there we go okay um, his legs are a mess. Can't transform without breaking. Who's that? Um, yeah. The actual voice sound was more like, Dr. Claw, Ravage. And then they did the echoing stuff. Um, yeah, I, when I've done... I've added a little bit of reverb when I do sound wave for some of the little uh, Transformer overdubs that I did. Um, so I did add a little bit of reverb, but... Soundwave superior, Constructicons inferior. Um, where did you order a Legacy Animated Prime and have not gotten it yet? That's weird. Um, what's my approach? opinion on overlord um which one i had the g1 european overlord i sold it if i hadn't sold it i actually did some toy shows years ago when i was going through the great purge and if i hadn't sold that overlord i would have like come back with like hardly anything from the last show that i did and then i was like nah i'm not gonna sell anymore um, Overlord, I haven't done much with him, but he seems pretty cool. Um, I actually need to check out the, uh, Black Shadow, Black, uh, who's actually a repaint and remold of him. Um, I need to do it for research. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, tracks can't transform without breaking. You can, but he, you, yeah, you got to be extremely careful. Mine is not broken as of yet. But I haven't transformed him a heck of a lot. Um, I have G1 tracks. I have Masterpiece tracks. Well, it's a knockoff Masterpiece. I have Turbo tracks. I used to have Action Master tracks, and I have the new Legacy tracks. 
The Titans Return Overlord. I think I looked at it once. I mean, it's Overlord. I think I transformed it once and then put it on a shelf. He was okay. Sky Shadow. Yes, Sky Shadow. T Fan Page 101. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, Sky Shadow. I need to do some research. I have a couple different versions. I also have like a third party version. He's basically like the deluxe size Sky Shadow, but uh, slightly different. He's actually pretty cool. One of these days, you guys would not believe um, the Transformers that I have that I have not had a chance to review. Jurassic Steve, thank you for coming. Um, do me a favor before you leave. Email me at captain at fandom, F-A-N-D-O-M, spotlight, S-P-O-T-L-I-T-E dot com. Just in case uh, you are the winner of one of the spots, I want to let you know. So, um, yeah. So definitely uh, let me know about uh, your email so I can get in touch in case you are on the live stream. Uh, Studio 86, Grimlock on Pulse. It's always sold out. I'm sorry. It was... Uh, I did manage to get one of those. Um, and the Shattered Glass version. The uh, When they did their like vault sale I was that close to getting a Hazlab Unicron um, but it was gone very quickly um, let's see Siege Ultra Magnus I mean Siege Ultra Magnus is a pretty good toy I have him and I have an oversized version of him knockoff um Do I have a Diacone clone collection? Um, I used to have a couple Diaclones. What I had was the uh, Transformer versions, the pre-Transformer versions of Jazz and Sideswipe. They did not have Autobot symbols until I added them later. Uh, I had those in the box. Beautiful, beautiful box, awesome box, best box you'd ever seen. Um, I had those. And I do have a lot of eHobby exclusives, which look like Diaclones, like Tiger Track. And um, who else do we got here? Like, uh, Clamp Down. Um, I have a lot of those. Um... But you, I only had a couple Diaclone things. And I think I have like a Diaclone uh, version of one of the um, Power Dashers. The uh, Sky Dasher. Um, so yeah, not a Diaclone collection per se. Um, the Titans Return Sky Shadow. Yeah, I think I still have them in the box. It's finding the time to get stuff out of the package is part of the problem. Because I work a full-time job. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you make tons of money on Toy Spotlight. Uh, I hate to say it, but do, do the math here, people. I buy a $25 basic. Bruce Bishop, awesome. Um... I will get to your question in a moment, but I buy a $25 deluxe. I do a review and if it's gets okay views, I might make $5 from YouTube. I'm not making money, a ton of money on uh, toy spotlight. One day I hope to uh, pay for my collection with it. Um, have you or would you consider a video showing what you have on display in your home? Yes, I have considered that quite a bit. Um, a lot of them, I'm in, I have a studio. So when I bought this house, one thing I wanted was a studio. Because I have two YouTube channels. 
and I needed a place in my old house. I didn't have a studio when I wanted to do a shoot. I had to rearrange the living room and set up cameras and everything. Now I have a dedicated studio, but along that wall, I have mainly Autobots and some third party stuff. Over there, I have a bunch of Decepticon stuff. I have stuff I haven't reviewed over here. I have a table with all like the Titans on it. <coughs> I have a lot. And then in my dining room, my dining room, I have a cabinet and a couple glass cases full of Transformers. I have more upstairs. I have a shelf in my office upstairs that has like all the Megatrons, all the Skywarps, all the uh, Thundercrackers, all the other Seekers, except for Starscream. He's got a case in the dining room. Um, I would love to show it. I just need to straighten out because this place is a mess. So I need to clean up before I can do a video. And then I probably still can't show everything because I still have a couple bins, a bunch of bins in the garage that have packaged and unpackaged transformers. So I don't have enough space. I, I need to like add on to my house. So... But thank you so much for the super chat, and you are entered in for the uh, chance to be on a live stream in two weeks with myself and Patriot Prime Reviews as we talk about Transformer stuff, and we will have some interesting discussions. Um, let's see. So, Sky Shadow is awesome. Um, G1 Cup versus Unicron. Well, if Cup could get inside Unicron... And, you know, set a bunch of charges undisturbed, he'd probably win. A re-release re re on 86 Grimlock, that's cool. Um, still wait, we're all waiting on Swoop. How do I spell my name? With letters. Um, Kyle is K-Y-L-E. Um, though you can just call me Captain if you want. So if you're curious about the origins of that name, I am i don't do it as much anymore, but I used to be heavily into cosplay, and my first characters, I was like Captain Malcolm Reynolds, Captain America, Captain Kirk, um, a whole bunch of captains, and people just started calling me Captain and Captain Kyle, so I was like, that's a good name to keep, so that's kind of cool. 86 RC or Earthrise RC, which is better? Didn't I do a comparison? Um, I think the 86 RC might be slightly better. I mean, I have the Thrilling 30 and I have the Combiner Hunters version. So I kind of like the aspects that they put into the 86 from the Thrilling 30. Um, what's fake news? <laughs> fake news, folks. Fake news. Uh, Diaclone did not exist. Big man, strong man came from me, tears in his eyes, says, I thought Tyclon existed, but it did not. Um, anyway. Um, so, anyway. Um, Phoenix, that's neat. Way too rich for my blood. In really interesting, though. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. This, this is coming in. I lose track in the chat. Um. Yeah, Earthrise, I'm not dissing the Earthrise RC. It is a good thing. Um, but eventually you will get a tour. I just need to clean up some stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, I am slowly showing my entire collection <laughs> in some of these videos. You see, one of the reasons um, it's good to actually do videos about older Transformers, I already have them, so I don't have to spend money to review them for you, but, uh, like the evolution stuff, I pretty much have most of those already. So, uh, you know, that kind of helps out, but, you know, and I know you guys like series, they're the Japanese Transformer characters. We finally got, um, part two is on the way and I have a couple other series ideas after that, which will be fun. One of them will probably go on forever. Um, because there's so many that fit into the category, but it'll still be fun. Um, my favorite Transformer line. 
G1 will always have a special place in my heart. But I do have to say, as far as posability and stuff, a lot of the later stuff, the Siege through Legacy, I mean, a lot of the Legacy stuff I really, really like. Um, but it's hard. Every line has some really cool stuff. In fact, um, another video that I'm going to be doing soon, I'll be probably shooting this weekend, is my favorite five Beast Wars Maximals. And Beast Wars is a very cool line. Um, four customs from the Earthrise RC mode mold. What uh, did you make like... Because they did release a Lifeline Paradron Medic. Um, did you make like a a Nightbird? <laughs> um, my all-time favorite bot still tracks, but like I'd have to say the G1 version is my favorite, even though he's not as posable. Well, he is an amazing Corvette. Stunning auto mode. Um, but it's hard. It's like saying which one of my cats do I like the, the most. Sky. You didn't hear that. So, you can't see them, but I, there are a couple cats coming around here. And they might have left. So... Newt and Herbie are in the vicinity. Hi, Newt. It is very unlikely that Newt is going to come up here. But they like to get pet together. You guys want to come up? Want to meet everybody? We'll see. Herbie might come up. I'll make some room for him. Okay, um, made a lifeline, a combiner hunter deco, a Solus prime, and a yet unnamed Decepticon. Um, both Matrix, I think I saw one video of them, Mitch and Tona, I don't recall. Honestly, I don't watch a ton of other Transformers, um, YouTubers. It's not because I don't want to check them out. Usually if I'm w watching a another YouTuber, it's because I'm having trouble with the figure and I need to figure out how to transform it. So, um, so that, uh, the freaking geek himself, I will check it out his transforming videos. He doesn't have them all. Sometimes I'll find some other people, but it's really time is the fire in which we burn. And, uh, I don't have as much time as I would really like to have because, well, two YouTube channels, full-time job, and uh, five cats to take care of. Yeah, it would be uh, would be nice to have more time. Um, but, yeah, I usually don't watch a lot of the other reviewers. That's why sometimes I might do a review on something that everyone else has reviewed, but I don't care. You can watch it or you can not watch it. I'm not kidding, Jack. You can watch it, you can not watch it, whatever you want to do. You know, this is a free country, man. Okay. Um, Lifeline was canceled by Amazon. Ah, oh, that sucks. I do have the new uh, Lifeline. Um, and I have the uh, aerial um, medic... <laughs> The Japanese one that looks should have been called Lifeline or Birdron Medic, but they just called her like uh, a different version of RC in Japan. <laughs> so these two cats, they love this chair. This chair is covered in hair because they love lying in this chair so much. And they're like wanting me to get out of the chair. You guys are going to have to wait a little bit. Um... Yeah, I, I may have seen Mitch Santona at some point. Um, but, yeah, I, there's a lot of great reviewers out there. We all have different styles. Um, and uh, different stuff. I, I 
no Patriot Prime reviews. Jason, I know uh, Rodimus Primal. I've been at many a con that he's been at. He was actually at the BotCon in New Jersey. I got to see him there. Um, and there was uh, some guy who was a volunteer who wanted a picture with both of us. And one of the celebrity guests, I think it was Susan Blue, was like, huh, interesting. So, who, of course, is the voice of the original RC? Um, anyways, we are going on an hour and a half here. Um, so I'm going to be going off, uh, pretty soon. However, just FYI, um, we are, uh, if you put in any amount super chat in two weeks, same bat time, same bat channel. We are doing a Transformers live stream, and I'm going to have some very interesting things to talk about, just talking about Transformers. And if you want a chance to be in that live stream, anyone who gives a super chat gets a chance. So I'm going to start writing down names so I can actually uh, figure out who is going to be um, considered because I think we have more than four super chats and we only have four spots so and I want to announce the winners here so I have to scroll back through give me a moment guys um, I am not going to, if you've given more than one, I really appreciate it, but I'm not going to give you a second chance because it's not really fair to the people who like gave 20 bucks and you gave like five and five for the, you to get an extra shot and they do not. So it's just whatever one per person. So hopefully... And if I call your name, and what I want you to do is send an email to captain at fandom, F-A-N-D-O-M, spotlight, S-P-O-T-L-I-T-E dot com. And tell me what your screen name is, who you are, so I can invite you. So, I'm going to do the drawing soon, but you guys have a chance if you want to uh, to get a chance. We have six people in four spots, so you have a pretty good chance here. I have them all on these Phantom Spotlight cards, and I will shake them up in a bag and draw out four. Um, President, thank you um, for the congrats. Yes, I'm definitely. I'm hoping to keep growing. Um, one day, I hope to get that silver play button. That would be nice. But uh, yeah, um, Bruce, you don't want to uh, be on the live stream. I'll, I will take you out if uh, you do not want. So, we've got five people and four slots. So. Odds are pretty good. Um, PPR. It's entertaining. Yeah, radio voice. I actually, I have what I call my, um, my video voice. Because I make, for my day job, I do instructional videos. So my video voice is, welcome to this video on Microsoft Word. 2016, you know, and I will basically be very formal, but then I, I have other voices, obviously. Me, Grimlock, happy to be here. Yeah, I've met uh, Greg Berger. He puts a little bit more of a, me, I, I have a cold, so I don't know if I can do it in my throat, but me, Grimlock, happy to be here. 
Me Grimlock think you stink. That's always a, a fun voice to do. Um, Jonathan, you don't want to be uh, in there, so basically, um, we've got four people who uh, will be on the live stream because we only got four entries, unless going once, going twice. <laughs> But again, thanks everyone for the super chats or just for attending and throwing questions my way. That is very awesome. Um, I got to give those to somebody. So hopefully Jurassic Steve has emailed me so I can get in touch with him. Pondering Gray, send me an email so I can send you. Now we do it by Zoom. So everyone will be in a Zoom uh window and we will uh and then it gets streamed so michael michael brister you are on and ethan you get to be on the live stream as well um you can send it through your you need to send me your email address through insta that's fine ethan because you uh but yes you are in the live stream so it's going to be a fun time. Uh, pay no attention to the millions of people who will be watching. You know, the 17 people that will be watching. Um, yeah, a couple people dropped out. So instead of having a 66% chance, you had a 100% chance. Um, thank you, guys. And, yeah, I want to do more live streams. I used to do the What's in the Box live stream, which was fun. But I don't have any more boxes to go through. So I'm going to try to do stuff on like uh, this one coming up. We're going to talk about the lives of Transformers outside of war. Which might be fun. And then we might do like a favorite um, repaints video. And bring on some other YouTubers. And we'll just see what happens. Um, it could be fun. The email, Michael, is captain, C-A-P-T-A-I-N, at fandom, F, as in Frank, A-N-D-O-M, spotlight, S-P-O-T-L-I-T-E, dot com. Or you can go to fandomspotlight.com and there's a contact me under the about and you can send me an email through there. Just make sure I get your email address so I can get in touch with you. And you can be part of the live stream. Um, hey, you're just one AliExpress order away from having many boxes in a month. The thing is, I've ordered so much stuff from, from AliExpress. It just like is constantly coming in. Um... But they have some good stuff. Um, I am going to be doing a review shortly on uh, the Bloki's classic line of the model kits. I don't know how many of you saw the videos with little model kits of Transformers that you put together. They snap together. They're super postable. They're super awesome. I really like them. They don't transform, but they're super awesome. I'm getting a bunch of those direct from the manufacturer to show to you guys um, very, very soon. So that's coming up. Um, and yeah, there's uh, the next Jap one of the Japanese series will be coming up. Um, my five favorite Maximals. Um, finally getting around to, well, I finally got the um, concept Megatron from Bumblebee. So I'll be reviewing that. I also have these little tiny Trypticons we'll be doing. So lots of stuff coming. But thank you guys so much for attending this live stream. I could have been sitting here talking to myself and twiddling my thumbs. But you are here. And, uh, and thank you. Um, we will see you. Um, <laughs> yes, it is dangerous. Um, I still have a G1 reissue hound and thrust to do. So more of those will be coming 
soon as well. So many things to review and make videos about. But thanks, you guys. Um, and thanks for all your support. We will hopefully see you in uh, two weeks. And as always, have fun. And good hunting. Bye, guys.